Hey guys, so it's here bringing you another video and a welcome to the patch note video. So I am recording this tonight and releasing it tonight. I will just say I hope you appreciate that because I've had to put Huzzy Pogger on hold. I've just been sorted and he's now on hold. Anyway, let's go through what we're doing today. Um, so we're working to bounce back from the social engineering attack, but unfortunately, patch 13.3, this patch, will be delayed. We'll post details back here once we have a good understanding or we'll be able to roll out the patch. So just to make it very clear, these are the patch notes, but it is not coming out tomorrow. We're not having patch. I don't know why we're getting the patch notes, because maybe they could have changed a few more things before. But anyway, that's what's happening. Uh, Aurelian Soul CGU. Oh, yeah, CGU is coming out, though. And then the RE one is potentially happening as well. So there we go. Right. The highlights. Looks slightly different, this. Uh, nerfs to Annie. Huh? I do not even remember the last time I saw Annie. Amumu, Cassidin, uh, Cassante, and Zack. Maybe Udyr should be there as well, but I don't know. Uh, buffs quite a lot to Alistair, Brom, Jarvan, Kale, Kane, LeBlanc, Nautilus, Pike, Rakan, Thresh, and Trundle. And then obviously Aurelian's been adjusted. System changes to Overheal, Radiant Virtue, Tenacity I adjustments, and Umbral Glaive. Uh, new items are the um, Valentine's ones. I don't know why they've made the Amumu one so small, but Heartache Amumu, and then Heartache Vi, and Heartthrob Caitlyn. And again, this skin between Vi and Caitlyn is, again, we already kind of know it, but confirming kind of their relationship, romance, etc. Obviously, we, we kind of got the gist of that from Arcane, and they are carrying it through in League. So that's cool. So let's get into it. So Aurelian Soul. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm honestly going to skip talking about it here. The reason why is I don't think I'm going to do it justice explaining his whole brand new kit because I'm going to do a video on it. I, I've been waiting. Obviously, I didn't really play on him on the PBE. I want to cover an un un a Unranked to Diamond episode as soon as the patch comes out. I will be playing an Unranked to Diamond episode on him, giving it a go. And potentially he might even make it into my main champion pool if I like it. In essence, he's more of a, a fire-breathing dragon than before. Um, but he still has his kind of core fundamentals of being able to fly and stuff like that. So we'll look at him in detail later. All I will say is his ulti looks absolutely mad. Uh, he can just like knock up like half of the map. And yes, I did say that right in like absolute late game with all the stacks in the world, he can like do the biggest knockup you've ever seen. It's it, it's mad. But let's get into the changes apart from that. Obviously, apologies if you're wanting me to talk about that. I just think it's better to, to cover it in a, an actual video playing it. Uh, Amumu, Q mana cost increase, E base damage decreased. So yeah, Amumu has been a bit too good for a while, but I would say this is mainly to two things. Their adjustment that they did to bandage toss, giving it two stacks available, it just made it so good. Because his absolute chain CC for one champion, if you hit your first Q, then hit your ultimate, then you can do a follow-up Q, you're keeping something still for God, like three, four seconds, which is mad. So it put him obviously really good in the support role. And then let's be honest, the other thing that's keeping him like relevant is demonic. Demonic Embrace, the item really needs to get still nerfed to the ground. Champions like Amumu, Udyr, Maokai, all of them are using the item. So yeah, we'll see what they do if they're doing anything, which I don't know if they are in this patch. But anyway, Tantrum, um, damage is just going down. No, damage is going up, um, but scaling. So less damage in the early game, slightly more damage in late game with the equalizing a rank four. And then mana cost of Q is more expensive. So they're just kind of toning him, especially his early game down, which is very strong in, I would say, especially support. And his jungle isn't too bad, but I think his jungle just gets a bit more punished in higher ratings than lower. But he's still a problem. Annie, no idea why this is getting nerfed. Uh, passive is now fully charged on spawn. E shield strength increase, cooldown decrease. Wait, what? Hang on. Didn't they say this is a nerf? This is a nerf. Hmm? Um, Annie's been struggling to pick up wins. So yeah, why are you nerfing it then? Huh? Uh, Ratim is healthy. I think that might be wrong. I think this is a buff. 
So Annie's been struggling to pick up wins even when she's matched against opponents that she should have an, an advantage against. We're giving one of League's oldest champs some much needed quality of life buffs to her Molten Shield and Pyromania passive and bumping up Tibber's durability for late game fights. The intent is to buff Annie in ways that aren't just her upfront burst damage, but we'll be keeping an eye to make sure these later changes, you know, are, are fine. So yeah, this is a buff. This isn't a nerf. I guess she's been miscategorized in the thing above. So which, which this is really nice. On spawn, Annie starts with her passive fully charged so she has a stun ready to go. Because, you know, at level one, a lot of champions have got stuns. Annie would have either had to start W, cast it a bunch, and then do an, a, an invade, but she's burnt so much mana and wasted a lot of time to get to that point. So now you can still take Q level one, or you could technically take W, and you can get your stun straight away. You don't need to waste that mana and time. So that's a big, nice quality of life change buff. And then the shield... The shield strength is going up to, by an AP buff, so it's a, a mid to late game, a better, you know stronger but it's also a 20 better shield at rank one so that's great for early game two the cooldown of it is also going down the retaliation magic damage so when she takes damage it reflects kind of like thorn mail etc is going up well is it, these are buffs um when molten shield is active enemies who basic attacks hit the shield receive magic damage when molten shield is active enemies whose basic is and spells oh my god so it used to be just basic attacks if you get spells or basic attacks you're taking damage back if you're hitting annie with her e up and then the other thing is e molten shield will now um inflict damage once per shield so yeah so molten shield now only inflict damage against opponents once per target per shield so you'll only reflect damage once per player rather than every like every single auto attack or whatever that's fine and then summon tibbers he, Tibbers is getting more health. Whoa, he's going to have a lot more health. So he, he's the same base health, but he you never had a plus 75% ability power ratio as Annie. So let's say you've got, I don't know, just very basic, 1,000 ability power. So that means you'd be gaining 750 bonus health on Tibbers for that 1,000 ability power. Obviously, Annie doesn't get 1,000 ability power. In late, late, late game, she may get 500. So still, like, uh, you know, Tibbers will be with 500 ability power roughly in late game would have about three and a half thousand health. That's not bad. He is then getting uh, more resistances also based on your ability power. And his movement speed is going up per rank of your ulti. This is very nice for Annie. To be honest, a lot of these changes, I would actually say is, again, like they mentioned, it's not a buff to her burst. This is a buff to the other build that's quite popular is the Riley burn build so you go Riley's, and then you get leandri's you can get a demonic it's basically keeping yourself and tibbers alive and walking around just inflicting burn damage and if annie is tankier with her shield and tibbers is tankier in general it kind of goes with that so we'll see but um i like annie but she does have her limits especially in higher rating Javan, base armor increased, W uh, cooldown decreased, shield strength now scales with AD, and shield duration decreased. Yeah, I mean, Javan's not been in the best spot for quite a while, um, so he's getting a little bit more base armor, and then his shield is becoming more useful. Like, again, it's getting an 80 bonus AD ratio, where it, it didn't even have one before. So this is kind of a buff to, like, more aggressive Javan, that you're still going to be gaining a tanky shield, by building just AD. So maybe look for some like full AD Jarvans in this patch, which <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, Cassante. So again, they released Cassante. He was a bit too weak. And then they overbuffed him. And that's kind of where we are now. And I will say he's not absolute bulletproof. A bit of a spoiler in the next few days. I did play Cassante in Unranked Diamond. Got absolutely hard countered. And I could do sod all. So he's not like ridiculous ridiculous he's just ridiculous if the right circumstances are there that's what i would say so his health growth is going up but that is because his q knockup duration is going down uh so he's q3 and the stun duration is also going down so just less cc and then the stun duration of his w is going down there's obviously something here they're re reducing his cc and then his ultimate resistance is lost he used to lose 65 percent of his resistances he is now losing 85 percent of bonus resistances gone so again 
he has his cool ones his base ones as a champion but all the armor items or the magic resist that he buys from items that is now more being taken away so he will be squishier and that is the whole idea he is supposed to be tank tank when he's not in ulti and when he's in ulti he's supposed to be basically glass cannon but that's not really how he's felt so hopefully that helps a bit Casawin. so again i i said literally last patch when i went th through this video that the change would do basically absolutely nothing and it did nothing um so yeah and look right even even after his nerfs last patch Cassadin continues to casa win even riot are now calling this champion casa win so anyway e which obviously is the ability that you max uh base damage is going down uh in the early game which again is quite funny because a lot of people always say like oh you know he's weak in the early game he's surprisingly not weak in the early game that's the kind of funny thing he doesn't lose a lot of early games especially if you just play a bit smart a little bit reserved get a little bit behind in farm try to get level six relatively easily and then you can kind of start going ham that's the point that's not that bad for early game um the cooldown though from nearby cast so each cast nearby used to make the cooldown go down by a second each cast so in the middle of a team fight when all spells are going off he gets it gets his e back constantly that's just being nerfed a little bit so it's 0 0.75 seconds per cast instead of one so they'll do a little bit and again nothing major and then rift walk magic damage is going down base and that's it and then bonus magic damage per stack is going down a tiny amount i'm gonna be real with everybody these aren't gonna do anything <laughs> again this champion is obscenely strong i think people really underestimate how strong he is hence why i've started to play him a bit he's ridiculous and these don't do enough Ugh, yeah like the way that obviously i would potentially have done it myself like get rid of maybe the maximum mana scaling as well because he got actually a lot of damage that's what enables you to build like a frozen heart on him but it benefits you because you're actually getting damage from building frozen heart but it then makes you kind of a tank so that's the kind of thing that maybe they needed to get rid of if they really wanted to affect this champion a bit more but i think he's still going to be strong kale don't really see kale i would say the champion is still quite strong i think I, we have a couple community members that do play kale and weirdly enough one of the strongest ways i've seen kale be played is the more ad carry centric build and i'm not talking about playing kale bot lane still playing kale top but building ad carry-esque so building like a kraken slayer blade of the ruin king wit's end that is an incredibly strong build and i think more people probably should be doing that build than the current ap build because it's also that ad carry build is more was it's better against bruisers and tanks because it's got tank shred in it but anyway um passive uh, divine ascent getting bonus movement speed is a bit more not bad and then the e is giving a little bit more damage based on your ability power so i guess that is giving you more incentive to do the more normal ability power build not the ad carry build but we'll see how that goes Kane, um, a champion, I will say, has been always problematic pretty much since his, his inception. And that is because ultimately it's really hard to balance something that has two halves. He has obviously his assassin and he's got his bruiser red form. Typically, red form has always been better for solo queue, especially when red form in the past has done way too much damage and healing. That has been toned down, thankfully. Um, and then blue Kane can pop off very slippery can just have insane mobility and if it does very well has that kind of big one shot potential it's just not as consistent as red cane so what are we doing here so passive shadow assassin damage increased just in general and q scaling increased as well so they are now going to be giving him uh this the shadow bonus it was a 13 to 40 percent based on your level post mitigation damage to champions is repeated as magic damage for the first three seconds of damaging champions that is now 15 to 45 percent so at level 18 it's a five percent just flat out damage buff that's not bad um so we'll see how that goes and then q and they make it very clear here this does not affect rust which is the red form because he has separate q values so this is just for blue um 
Well, it might affect base and blue, but I don't know. So physical damage is going nothing by base. It is just getting a big 15% more um, percentage bonus AD damage. That's not bad for full damage blue cane. It, it will, by the way, and I'll make this point clear, a lot of blue canes that I have seen in the last few months have actually been building just because the items have been too simply strong. They've been building a tank item. I think this incentivizes you not to do that. This incentivizes actually play the assassin full AD cane and you'll be rewarded with so much more damage. So we'll see if that pops up again, and that's always fun to deal with. LeBlanc, this champion does struggle, I will say, because again, her, her scaling is not great. She is a lane bully, and so many of the, I would say, the top tier, especially mid laners, they're pretty safe right now. Like, Victor is pretty safe. Cassidin is pretty safe. Rise is pretty safe. They can play in such a way that they could, don't have to put themselves in harm's way in the early game, and that's a LeBlanc's nightmare. She can't punish them enough, but, you know, we'll see what they do. So base uh, stats, mana regeneration is going up, and mana regeneration growth is going up, so that's all, all overall quite nice. Mana cost is also getting flattened to 50 per rank, that's nice, and mimic cooldown is going down in the early game. So really trying to help her have that snowball, continue the pressure, like your mana costs are cheaper, more mana regen, and when you get ulti, you can use it more often in the early game. They're really trying to bring leblanc's even more early game up to try and help a snowball but i don't know if i just don't see it personally but yeah lee sin my boy i love this champion and he was the staple jungler for league of legends like a long time ago but he does struggle because again he does fall off um so what i want to see from this is giving him a bit more scaling you know i'd like him to be comparable to Hilariously, I'd like him to be comparable to like Kane and stuff like that who have that scaling because I think Lee Sin is a really good asset to a League of Legends scene. I think he's skill based. I think he's very flashy and that's fun to watch and see. And it feels rewarding to play him. You know, he's more skillful than a lot of other junglers because it's very as, you know, hit or miss. If, you, if you're not playing well on Lee Sin, it's really bad. But let's see what they're doing. So AD... QAD ratio increased, that's great. E-base damage decreased, however, and slow increased. Okay. So the AD ratio of Q... Okay, they're giving it 10% more bonus AD. And then also 10% of the, uh, the minimum physical damage too. So the sonic wave, which is the first element, and then when you press it again and land on somebody, the second element, is just getting overall an AD buff. Which is good, obviously, that's that's a scaling thing, because the later the game goes on, the more AD you've got, therefore that helps with scaling. That's not bad. And then the E, total damage of it, however, is, whoa, that is really down. Oh, why are they doing that? Wow, that's really bad. So the total damage, when you just press E, did 100 initially to 220. It's now doing 35 to 155. Oh, and then the slow is going up. So they're making it more into a U. They're basically shifting the damage from e, e into Q, but giving E more slow, more utility. And obviously the more slow that something has, the more likely you'll get an extra auto attack or two off on a, on a target. But damn, that's... I don't know about that. That seems a really harsh buff, especially for, in essence, an early game champion. Nerfing the damage this much in the early game is pretty bad for an early game champion. And this buff does not turn Lee Sin into, an, into a late game champion at all. So that's a, I don't know if that one's hit the mark, to be honest. That's a bit weird. Trundle, uh, W cooldown decreased at all ranks and discovered his passion for dancing. Uh, w uh, cooldown is, yeah, going down two seconds each rank. Not bad. And then show me your moves. Trundle's dance speed now scales with Trundle's movement speed. <laughs> Why? That's weird. That's a developer that was bored on a Thursday. Uh, Zach. So again, one of the other problematic junglers and champions in general in League at the moment. But again, thanks to Demonic Embrace as well and Radiant Virtue. But we are seeing nerfs to that later on. Um, so Unstable Matter W, magic damage of it is going down by just the excess that he was getting of ability power. And obviously when he could buy demonic embrace and stuff like that he was getting enough ability power not probably more than 100 maybe maybe some games are really fed zach may have hit 200 
But yeah, he was always hitting the plus 4% in a game. May have got more than that, but not often. And then the elastic slingshot is getting nerfed of its ability power ratio as well by 10%. And the base damage is also going down, starting at rank 2. I don't know. Um, I think he's still going to be quite strong. Again, obviously, the, the nerfs, when, when Riot are doing nerfs like this, they're not... What they're not wanting is a champion to be really popular and strong, and then suddenly we nerf it, and then you can't play it at all. That's not what they're aiming. So I think he'll still be playable. But I don't know. I don't know if that's enough. He's very strong right now. We'll, well, we'll see what happens with Radiant Virtue, I guess. Here it is, Radiant Virtue. Um, So, Radiant Virtue is currently o overpowered. God, Riot does not use that, that uh, word themselves very often, even if the pick rate isn't reflecting it. Oh my god, they're not just looking at stats. Uh, yeah, his strength isn't really appreci uh, appreciable, whatever, due to how unclear the item's best points are. Because when you buy a strong item, you should feel strong. We're making Radiant Virtue's upsides more apparent and the impact from... Blah, 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 blah. So they're making it more expensive, 200 gold more. The passive cooldown is going up by 30 seconds, so a 50% increase. That's a lot. The Guiding Light cooldown maximum health gained is going up, however. The total healing was 8 to 16% maximum over 9 seconds. It's now 12% maximum healing over 9 seconds, so... It's technically a buff if you get it really early into the game, but the later the game, it's a nerf. And then the they have removed the ability haste that you are getting yourself and granting to your allies nearby, which that again was quite annoying, for especially like a champion like Zac. That's how he casted his W and his spell so often uh, and healing a lot. So it is being nerfed. It's also, you know, big cooldown increase. So hopefully, hopefully... It stops uh, random champions buying it. Like you're seeing Karma's buy this item. Obviously, Zax, um, Udyrs. I've seen, I've seen a lot of different champions buy this item. I think even I saw like an assassin buy it once. It was a bit weird, but anyway. Umbral Glaive. Um, currently too much effective for choking out enemy vision for assassin supports and assassin supports, especially marksman supports. Again, the Caitlyn, Ash, and Jin support that some people are doing. Uh, we do think this item deserves a spot on the roster, though, so reducing its uptime and general ability to devastate enemy traps and division. So the cooldown of it is going up by 10 seconds. And then the update is when a ranged champion using Umbral Glaive attacks a ward, they deal true to true damage to it. Um, and then they've removed Umbral Glaive will no longer instantly kill traps. So it will reveal them, but not instantly kill them. Runes overheal. Shield value was 10 plus 9% of your maximum health. It's now 20 to 30, uh, 300, sorry, based on champion level. And that's it. So that is a nerf, I'd imagine. Uh, over, overheal changes were intended to ship on 13.2, uh, but because we only micro-patched 13.1b, this change was held back until now. Uh, overheal is stronger for everyone, and especially stronger for marksmen because the rune is weak and because players uh, can hopefully opt into running it in games where they need extra durability. Melee support adjustments. So, you know, this is nice to see, by the way. Um, so what they're basically, in essence, doing, I would, I would hope most people agree. If you look at bot lane right now, um, tank melee supports aren't really played that much. It is mainly enchanters, or as weird as what I'm about to say, is marksman supports. So ash and things like that it's it's a bit peculiar so giving a bit of love to the tank supports i think is a nice thing so alistair obviously very basic but very he's a cool champion they are buffing pretty much all of his abilities so the self-heal for alistair is now just going to his five percent maximum health that is huge buff uh ally heal six percent of alistair's maximum health that's a huge buff obviously later into the game that's big um, Q, mana cost is being lowered. Magic damage of it is going up with ability power. Oh god. W uh, for headbutt, mana cost lower. Magic damage scaling with ability power higher. Trample, ability power higher. All I'm hoping that this doesn't do, and it honestly has made me think about it, there used to be a playstyle of full AP Alistair Jungle. Some of you may remember that. That was like season... I want to say like season four of League of Legends. Full AP, Alistair Jungle. I hope that doesn't come back. It was really annoying. 
<laughs> but we'll see how it goes. This, by the way, doesn't mean that Alistair supports, by the way, going to be building AP. The kind of normal AP that you get just building some of the support items will actually give you a little bit extra damage. And that's what they're kind of trying to do. It's, it's, it's making the, that bit of ability power that you're getting a little bit more valuable. And hell, if you get really fed as an Alistair support, who's to say you don't build a demonic embrace or something like that? You know, you probably can. Brom, hide behind Brom. Passive concussion blows. So the target immunity duration used to be 864 seconds. Uh, it's now 864, but lower levels into the game. So if you use your passive on a, a on a enemy and they obviously get the the one, two, three, four auto attacks to then to be a stun, at level one, it takes eight seconds for that to happen again. It's now still eight seconds. But then it took till level seven for that to go down to six seconds, and then level 13, that to go to four seconds. It's now level six, it goes down to seven, which is technically higher, but you're getting it early into the game. Um, and then, oh wait, no, sorry. It's still six seconds. And then at level 11, you're getting the four seconds. So that's two levels lower than it was. So those are pretty nice changes. Q cooldown is going down two seconds in the early game. So that's a lot better for lane phase. And then W, stand by me, uh, bonus magic, uh, sorry, magic resistant armor is going up. I would say another quality of life change that they do, should do for Brom is, and potentially Rel, if you W your AD carry and then your AD carry gets a kill, but you don't do anything else, you don't get an assist on Brom for doing that. You should. That's the thing. You should get an assist because you're actively using a, a, an ability to aid your AD carry or whoever, and they're getting a kill. So that is a quality of life change I wish they would do. Nautilus, uh, I did, I think, play him today and he didn't feel too bad. I think that video is being uploaded, but I can't remember. Uh, but um, bonus damage from his passive is going up quite a bit. Not bad. Not bad for a support, at least for damage. And then the W, mana cost of it is going down and the shield strength is going up. Not bad. And then E, Riptide um, is going up on everything. The magic damage is going up by base and up in scaling ability power. Not bad for uh, Nautilus there. Pike, physical damage of his E is going up straight across the board. Very nice, apart from rank one. Rakan, cooldown of his Q is going down. The mana cost of it is going down, so a buff. And the base heal is going up. Damn, they're doing some big buffs to these champions, aren't they? And then the W um, grand entrance is going down by base damage but the ability power is going up and then thresh god every everyone that, that this is the last one so his q obviously his hook magic damage of it is going up by base starting a rank two onwards and then he's also getting 30 percent more ability power in the damage and just remember thresh's ap ratio can be interpreted as 0.8 damage per soul unless you're going ap thresh so because obviously he, Thresh gets ability power from his soul that then translates into the damage. So yeah, it, basically per soul that you pick up, you're getting an extra 0 0.8 damage per, per soul. So in late game, if you pick up 50 souls, it's, a, it's nearly an extra 50 damage just by picking up your souls on your hook. That's not bad. Uh, the shield per soul um, is now 2 instead of 1.5. So in late game, you know, make sure you're picking up those souls uh, and then your flay. Magic damage is do, do, do. they've miswrote this because again they've got the base damage of it is the same. It has 40% ability power. They've missed the ability power ratio that it's becoming. If I had to guess it was 40%, I would guess it's now 60%. That was that would be my guess, but I don't know. Tenacity. So they're doing a big change to this. Um, tenacity sources within the same group will stack multiplicatively with each other. Tenacity sources from separate groups will stack additively with each other. So over the years, tenacity sources have increased dramatically. We wanted to streamline how these effects uh, interact with each other as a cleanup to the old system and provide some clarity on which systems stack well and which don't. With these changes, almost all tenacity effects will stack multiplicatively, but it's net weaker together. 
as opposed to the previous system where various systems sometimes stacked extremely well to nullify crowd control. Because, yeah, I don't know if anybody has ever played against something like an Udyr that's running Mercury Treads. The rune that obviously is giving him thingy, sometimes having an Icebot Gauntlet or a Themis or something, you literally just cannot stop an Udyr because it all just stacked on top of each other. And it's like, well, he's not getting CC'd. It was a little bit silly. So they are kind of making it so things don't, do that anymore or as much so if anything is in group so if is if they're in the same group what it means is you're not getting as much if you have most most uh, you know if you're having if you're having a few of them they don't give you the full amount per one so if you're buying mercury treads you've got let's say i can't remember how much it is let's say 35 tenacity if you then buy Iceborne Gauntlet, and let's say that's 35 as well, you're not going to end up with 70 tenacity, I think. You're going to end up maybe with 50. It, you're not getting as much value of tenacity from each source, the more sources of these you have. But then group B will add. So obviously these are just very quick uses, but those are just those like burst, quick use of tenacity, that's fine. And then group C is obviously a little bit different because they're specific to the champion. So most of the sources of tenacity now which is most of this stuff you're getting less from them the more of them that you have in essence so yeah basically it makes it so like something like an udir who can have out of this list he could easily have or he could have moss stomper chem dragon buff think about it he could have unflinching technically i think he could have legend tenacity as well he could have elixir of basically udir could have all of those things and never get CC'd. Now he will get CC'd, which is good. Jungle adjustments, um, which is interesting. So income, tree income, gold per tree is going down. So the basically, this I guess just thinking junglers are getting a bit too much gold. And then experience per jungle camp with companion experience for clearing a jungle camp has been increased by five experience per camp. Oh, this is the change that basically they think it's too rewarding to gank early. So they're trying to incentivize you get more if you farm a bit more in the early game. I think that's what they're trying to do. Um, but yeah. Vision, Stealth Ward Trinket cooldown is going down based on champion level. Ganking success, turret damage is going down. Oh, so you can do easier dives. And then smite fights are for champions. Jungle companions can no longer deal lethal damage to epic monsters. So you can't just run away and expect that to die or just by chance um, they finish it for you. Uh, clash due to recent social engineering attack. The first clash tournament of the year has been unfortunately delayed. No, this means that the first clash tournament will not be in mid-February as it has been in the first year, uh, last few years. And the rest of clash tournament dates have been impacted as well no that's annoying so we'll get the date soon but yeah competitive our data shows that comeback rates when a team full uh, fails a 4v5 early surrender before 20 minutes are low teams have generally a good sense of what games they will and won't win when four out of five players are on the same page we'll be testing a change to surrender thresholds to let these matches resolve more quickly at the same time it's important that a winning team has time to feel powerful with the lead and games aren't abandoned too soon. We'll be closely monitoring. I say in blind and normal pick, normal surrenders, four out of five or 70% of the team members must agree to pass a vote is available. Used to be 20 minutes is now that's available at 15 minutes. And then unrelated, uh, the MMR dual restriction for Apex ranks has been re-enabled. Thank God. So again, just to make that clear what that is, I don't know why they did it. Like it just kind of enabled boosting easier. But in the beginning of the season, the first three, well, we're now on the third patch. They're getting rid of it. For the, but technically, the first two patches, they removed the restriction that you cannot do it with Master and Mamar. Like, they just got rid of that. I don't know why. If you're if you're actually in Master, you can't duo. But if you're if you're two players in Diamond 1, but with Master and Mamar, you could duo. And obviously, Riot last year got rid of that. That, you know, they noticed that obviously Smurf duos or just one person boosting another, they get really high MMR and they just kind of pulled somebody into Master. You could do the Master placements together or the Master, master promos together, 
they got rid of that and that was a really good change so i don't know why they allowed that at the beginning of the season that was a little bit weird to me and then may, uh, made matchmaking adjustments for faster normal pick queues types there's that um behavioral systems remove the warning and practice tool for staying in the fountain too long because yeah you're just doing changes and then you're getting um reasu and quality of life changes etc but there we go. That is the patch. Um, overall, I'd say a lot of the changes are good. I don't know if they've gone far enough in some of them. Um, I think Cassadin is still going to be really strong. I think Zach could be good. I think a lot of champions are still going to be probably building Radiant uh, Virtue. And again, I think some champions are missing. I think Udyr probably deserves to be on this nerf list. I think Draven probably deserves to be on this nerf list. Some of the AD carries are feeling really strong because obviously of the changes that they made last patch. But anyway, that's going to be it. If you guys enjoyed this patch, let me know what you think uh, by obviously liking the video. But yeah, throw a like on it, come a comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Crawl down the reckoning to bring back hope and peace. Restore our glory to live forever. Bring down the dark regime. Eternal peace.